And welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Train Simulator. In this episode, we're going to be exploring a new signaling system, the TGV system, famous in Europe. And this particular system is also the system used on the ever popular channel or channel tunnel, or appropriately more recently known as the Eurostar train, um, the route that connects. Great Britain to France. And the route that we're going to be doing today actually does depart from London St. Pancras uh, and travels all the way to, I believe, um, Aversham. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But it's an interesting route, but it actually is split between the standard UK signal style and the TGV style, um, depending on what part of the route you're at. And the part of the route we're going to do on this is the exclusively TGV style um, signaling. And we're going to be using a class 395 electrical multiple unit. And we will be starting from Ebbsfleet, driving into London, and then back to Ebbsfleet. This is one of my more favorite methods of driving a train, where it's very high tech and engaging and still requires you to kind of maintain your own control of the train. Again, I am using track IR, so we're using on purely the high speed section, as I said, from Ebbsfleet to San Pancras and then back to Ebbsfleet. We will load passengers here and we're going to depart at 1327, so in about two minutes. Here we have our train. And uh, I'll go over some things really quickly here. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about what's going on over here, although we will turn on our headlights. Uh, I'll go ahead and take a look at that. So it says day running mode is on. That's that. So if we go outside, we should see that our headlights are, in fact, not on. Not on that. Uh, let's see here should have headlights on. There we go. Still not quite right. Alright, I don't know what's going on with the headlights here. I shouldn't be doing it. Day running. Should be right. And maybe if I set the reverser to forward, there we go. So you have to set the reverser to forward, which I just did. And when you do that, you'll get an alarm, which you have to clear with the Q key. And we are now basically ready to go. So the throttle on this train is going to be combined brake and throttle, very important. So you only brake by slowing the throttle down with the D key, and that's all you need to do. Uh, we're running off of the overhead rail, the overhead line for this route. And one thing that's very important to note is that TGV system, being a European system, is in kilometers per hour, and the train display will re uh, recognize that. As we get ready to depart here, uh, what I will begin by saying is that the main premise of the TGV system, which we will begin by releasing the brakes and proceeding forward now, is that your speed limit is based on signals that are given to you right in the cab here, which momentarily we should be seeing some numbers pop up here. So our speed limit right now is 50, but again, since we're in the UK and the standard unit in UK is miles per hour, this is actually 50 down here, so you see these numbers are matching up. And here we have our first signal that pops up telling us 80. So our speed limit is, in fact, 80 kilometers per hour right now. And one thing that is very important when you're learning this system is the color of the numbers, and basically where they appear on the thing, but the color of the numbers, which essentially tells you the type of speed limit that you're being told to uh, follow here. This uh, white number with the black background, that's what's called, um, it's enforced immediately, which means that you must travel at that speed. Now, 
with this system there is a little bit of flexibility as in you don't have you won't immediately get the emergency brakes shoved on you if you happen to brake 80 there's a little bit of leeway, like a five five to fifteen percent leeway um, speeds it's like I'm at you know I'm at 101 right now it's not gonna freak out Another really cool thing about this, oh and most of this route is going to be underground in the tunnels, but another really cool thing about this train that I wish it had on other trains, you see this little arrow here? This is basically your change in speed indicator, and uh, that's really cool because it tells you if your speed is increasing or decreasing. So now you see we got this completely different looking number here, 225. So now we're basically the green number, white background with green green background with a white number means we are clear up to that speed, which is the maximum line speed for this segment of the route, 225. So we'll go ahead and head right on up there, and I will explain a lot of the things as we gain speed here. A uh, way to tell that you are under the TGV rail system for signaling is the signs on the side of the road, they're like blue background with a yellow triangle in the middle of it, there's one right there. And that basically means your signaling system, in order to operate on these lines, is required to have this kind of internal monitoring and notification system. Because otherwise, you aren't getting any visual indications of what uh, signal you're being given outside of the train. So you have no way of knowing other than the system inside the train. There you go, there's another one. So basically, it's set up in blocks, just like any other ordinary signaling system is. But what happens is each time you pass through a block, you get an update as to what the speed limit is going into the next block. So right now it's continuously 225 all the way through. So here comes another one. And that means it's just clear on to the next block. What will happen is if you are approaching a block that is occupied or otherwise requires a lower speed, you will begin to see those speeds pop up in your windows uh, in white diamonds. And basically the white diamond speed means this is the speed you need to be going by the time you hit the next blue and yellow square or the next block. And of course there's always a little bit of leeway for that. But you don't have to be at that exact speed. But you need to be heading there and basically be there by the time you get to the next block. Knowing how far you are to the next block is really just a judgment call. You just kind of need to be on the brakes and ready to react. Oh, and by the way, that high-pitched beep is basically a dead man switch. Uh, it's a driver reminder device. Press the Q key to clear it. Now you see that the 225 is flashing. Now what flashing means is that you can expect when it's flashing that the next speed limit or the next signal you get will be telling you that you need to start slowing down. It's just telling you to expect that the next signal. So it's kind of like the double yellow or a, an advanced approach signal where it's kind of telling you, okay, get ready to slow down, but you don't have to slow down. So right now we can kind of go steady here at, you know, as close to 225 as possible as we can maintain appropriate timing, we should be able to get a full score on this route without too much of an issue. As you can see, very cool uh, train here. We can go outside and watch it go by. Be careful with speed here. But now we have our, yeah, see, now we're starting to get a little bit of indication of what the next speed will be. The fact that it's changing like this, it's like it's like you see you have to slow down and then it goes away. But that technically what that means is that there's there's a train in front of you and it's basically pulling away and into the next block and you don't really have to worry too much about slowing down. So what's really happening is that these blocks are like three or four deep. Like on a on a three aspect system it's only two deep. I mean, like, the, it only tells you what's ahead by two signals. This system is really, it's its multiple blocks deep. Like, it can be five or six blocks deep. And what that really is is to give you plenty of time to slow down as much as possible when you're uh, approaching an oncoming, you know, 
know, approaching the next train or approaching a station or some other speed limit requirement. So you give you plenty of time to be ready to slow down. So now we're getting a flashing 200, which means it's going to slow down further. So we'll kind of just idle here and react as we get the signals. It seems like there's numbers flashing all over the place, but really the best way to, re to kind of realize what's happening is that the only time you'll see a speed limit decrease, an alert to decrease your speed, is when you're passing one of those yellow and blue signs, like right here. So as soon as you pass one of those signs, you go to the next block, and the flashing indication means that you can expect a lower speed to pop up on your window when you pass that sign. So it's like we were we were commanded or we were said okay slow down to 170, but because the train ended up clearing up ahead, we're not held to that 170 anymore. But as we pull through these uh, signs here, we will be continually held to slow and slower speeds. So really, it's I mean, I think in order to get the best possible time on the scenario, you, you do kind of have to chase the signs a little bit. It's, it's, uh, it's tough to kind of get a good timing on this, unless you are chasing the signs. But again, of course, there's always some uh, buffers you can kind of play it by ear here. So it's like 170. If we're going 175, you're not going to get a flag for speed. on your way down towards that speed. This one's still flashing, so we're going to kind of slow down a little bit. Now we're down to 100, so we'll go ahead and 130. Because we're coming up to the station here. Alright, triple zero. Triple zero basically means the next signal you need to stop. So we only have 0.45 to stop, so we'll go ahead and be on our way to that.
Now as where you're supposed to actually stop on this uh, platform, I don't really know for sure. So I kind of just and neutralize the speed. I go up until that gantry up there by that, that red box, trash can. That would be a good spot to go. Another way to do is just kind of watch the time here and uh, basically start putting on those brakes as soon as you see it hit the arrival time. I know that. Good to go. See, I probably could have stopped a little sooner. It's okay. There it is. Not two seconds too late. Not bad. This little view. Train. This side. It's a decently long train. It's actually a double train. Let's see if I uh, went up here. The uh, split between the two is a little coupling in the middle. We're heading it ready to go forward. Brakes. As soon as you kind of hear that hum come in, you can go ahead and basically go all the way up to level four. You're not going to get the wheels to grind on this one. And then we head once again into a nice long tunnel. Time this right, we should pop out at 100 right around the time. It goes up to do 25. Perfect. Now we have five miles to go until we get to London. Something pretty happen, interesting will happen uh, coming out of this tunnel here. We actually temporarily shift back into the German, uh, excuse me, the Great Britain, UK signaling system, but only for a short period of time. Even though we switch back into that system, we're still under the electric signal uh, of the TGV system. So we will still get TGV speeds, speed limits, but we do have to adhere to the British systems speed limits in priority to TGV limits. The yeah, British limits take priority. Again, those limits are the ones you physically will see outside the window telling you how fast to go and of course the uh, green, yellow, and red signal lights. So here we're already getting an indication that we have to slow down because we are getting close to London here. 3.3 miles to go. But again, until you actually see what that speed is, you don't have to take any action. So I see it's 200. So we basically kind of keep going here until we get 200. So it's a level one here, so it's running a nice uphill. Oh, we got 160, so we had it slow down.
60. That's a long way down. A nice uphill here so we can kind of ride a very light break as we pull up to this signal here. Right at the exit of the tunnel. That was an indication that, as far as I understand, that indication is that it's basically to alert you that you're getting back on the UK style signals, which we now see the green signal. So as you see, the signal, the speed limit actually does disappear. I kind of misspoke there before. So the speed limit does disappear. So basically what you need to do for this part is, we, we luckily, we have the HUD down here to tell us what the speed limit is. But you gotta kind of do a little bit of mental math and, uh, you know, know what your speed limit is and how to react to it. So we have a 25 limit coming up here. We have to actually slow down to 25 miles an hour. Don't get confused with 25 kph, which is still in effect up here. It's 25 miles per hour down here. As I said, we're on the British system again, so these 25s are in miles per hour. Let me do another scenario where we show this is actually a hybrid train that's able to switch between the two uh, two signals. That's kind of the whole purpose of this scenario is to show that you can switch between those two modes, but you can only do it when you're stopped. So coming into London and leaving London, you're supposed to be in TGV mode, but because this little segment just outside of the station is still considered part of London's uh, signaling system, you have to be able to do a little bit of mental math in your head and understand, you know, what is 25 in kilometers an hour? It's about 40. So that's easy. Of course, now we're pulling into the station, so we actually have to come to a stop. And we'll do the same thing as we leave here, going back out towards Ebbsfleet. Start slowing down here, end of the track. We're here a little bit early. This isn't really a problem. That's pretty good. Yeah, see, there was still a lot of space there before I would have hit it, but. Never a bad idea to be a little more careful than you. We're going to go ahead and put those lights off. And what we're going to do now is we're going to switch ends. Because we need to go the other way. In order to switch ends, let's kind of keep everything as it is. Um, what you could do is want to be really realistic. Bring the panogra panograph up. I think you do by clicking that. Click that. That puts the paragraph down. I don't know where the button is for that out. And then you press Control plus. And then you're in the middle now, so you have to press Control and plus again. And then finally, one more time, Control plus. And now that we've pressed that, now we can turn the panic back on this side. And we are ready. Go. Go ahead and set that reverser forward should give us the alert and we can then set the headlights to daytime running check them visually very good and now no departure time of 13:48 go ahead and minimize the size of the hud there head back towards Ebb's fleet. Again, stopping at Stratford Internet. Away. Brakes are off. 
go to level three on this one, so it's it's, it's a pretty. Uh, you now we only go out to 25 here miles per hour, so we don't have to get really fast. Accelerate. This nice long downhill gets you up to speed pretty quickly. It's kind of cool. Well, we have to stop in less than five miles, so we will probably get all the way to 225 again on this segment. But the closing segment, we should be able to get there. That speed limit did come a little quick, so I had to jam on the brakes there.
So this one I actually ended up being a little bit late to, surprisingly. Go ahead and get a stop pretty quickly here so we end up being as possible. Say I arrived at 1353 and I'm departing at 1354, so I'd say I pretty much made it. It's another train arriving from the other direction. These lines are very busy, that's why they have such an awesome signaling system. Oops, I forgot to forward. Yeah. And basically, as soon as we hear that hum, get up to the max volume and go full power. mile journey to the Ebb's fleet. Be able to get all the way to full speed and be there for quite a little while. Biscuits and an iPad. Very sophisticated. With this one, lets you go into the multiple sections of the train.
Celtic or bus storage. was probably just the speed limit to get uh, shift down to this track here as we approach Ebb's fleet. Probably all that was. But now we got the speed limit to actually slow down to the uh, station. Here's the platform. Basically, we're going to take it all the way to the end. A little warning that the next signal is yellow. And by the way, after this station, you can continue going all the way to Faversham on this particular route. And to do that, you have to actually switch over to that other mode I was talking about. So perhaps in the next video, I will demonstrate that function. Till then, we'll take a look at how we did. We will call it a video. Go ahead and power down the lights. I think there was an error or a glitch in this uh, 
because we should be able to get to a thousand, but apparently it's only 400 out of 400, which is a perfect score for this scenario. So I will catch you guys next time.